Hello and welcome to the show. Today we are going to talk about Masek, a Singapore-based investor with $288 billion of net portfolio value across the world and 7% of that accounts from India. Let me welcome on the show Ravi Lamba of Masek. Ravi, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. My first question, we are in a dynamic world right now. Liquidity has been affected because of higher interest rates across the world. And that particular wish list has not been granted yet. How does it impact the overall liquidity situation and investor mindset? And add to that big events like US elections impending, also geopolitical tension in two regions in the world. Sure, Nisha, that's a good question. There's a lot of topics there, but let me try and break it down. So how, how are we looking at uh, our investing hmm. strategy? I think as we think forward, uh, our investment focus, um, more of our dollars will likely go to the Americas and India yes. in the next, say, year or so, hmm. uh, as we think about what's happening there. And globally, you're right, there's, there's a significant amount of uh, uncertainty on hmm. both geopolitics, that's a concern, as hmm. we think through what might happen there. We're seeing some possibly some tail risks from uh, political shifts in Europe, as we've seen in the last few weeks. Mm. Uh, there's still geopolitical uncertainty out of yes. China, uh, yes. which might impact the export demand out of China. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think about that carefully. Uh, and then we see the positives of that also can happen in certain places where we may see supply chain-led mm -hmm. upside uh, you know, that we might see for India, as mm. India's low cost manufacturing base helps India do more in the export side. Uh, Overall, uh, fiscally, we see the, the, the Federal Reserve is likely to keep rates higher for longer. Mm -hmm. uh, we think the 2% target is uncertain at this stage. Mm -hmm. The good, good news is that recession risks have faded. Mm -hmm. The global economy is strong. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, the, on the U.S. side, you see the labor market is, is resilient, as is growth. Uh, so the, the overall risk framework seems to have come down, mm -hmm. uh, which makes us more positive to put more capital to work. Right. Uh, as we find there are opportunities on a, on a bottom-up basis in these countries. Right, and uh, where does it put India for uh, Temasek uh, at the current moment, especially with the big event of union elections now behind us? Mm. We have a coalition government, and I know a lot of foreign investors were really banking on a stiff majority for the BJP and also policy continuity. Mm. Has your mindset and your India view changed after the election results, which were a little bit of a surprise? Firstly, I think for us, we, you know, we're a long-term investor in India. We've been here for 20 years. This is our 20th year. It's, in fact, it's our 50th year hmm. as Tamasek, uh, about 20th year in India. And we are able to invest across many of these cycles, be it political, be it market volatility. And so that bothers us less. Hmm. What we are focused on is the future. How does yes. the future look? Uh, we do believe the government will continue to be reform-focused. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been in the past. They have shown the ability to, you know, put through reforms, and mm -hmm. and we don't see, you know, once the tide is positive, it mm -hmm. continues to to stay positive from mm -hmm. that perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the the policy reforms to continue. Uh, you know, we think there's consistency in policy, mm -hmm. uh, and as long as policy is consistent, whether it's favorable, or unfavorable, we can we can decide how to invest. Right. And that we see as a positive overall. All right. So overall positive. And, uh, you know, last year when we spoke, Ravi, you said that up to $9 billion for next three years is the kind of investment plan you have for India. Uh, so by that logic, a run rate of $3 billion of investment has been achieved in the last year? Yes. So last year we did $3 billion uh, because we found the opportunities. And if we find the opportunities, we'll continue to do that run rate. We, we think, so if I step back, I think what we think about India right now, India exposure is... Uh, almost $50 billion in sing dollar terms. So it's about $37 billion U.S. dollars. Hmm. So that's our portfolio exposure in India. Yes. Uh, over the next three years, we're hoping we can put, say, $10 billion to work. Hmm. Uh, maybe more, maybe less, depending on the opportunities. Hmm. Our portfolio, our subsidiaries are also investing in India. Right. Uh, so that, that amount of investment may be higher, hmm. depending on how they invest. And, you know, hmm. we have subsidiaries like uh, uh, STT Data Centers, uh, Singapore Airlines, uh, hmm. Singapore Telecom, uh, SEMCORP, they're all investing in India, uh, mm. Ascenders, Capital Land. So their investment, uh, their investment journey uh, mm. also shows that they are increasing exposure to India. So right. if I put that together, you know, our, uh, that's how we think about growing exposure here. Mm. Uh, you know, we are invested in some really interesting companies already, mm. where we continue to put more capital to work as necessary. Uh, and then we see, uh, you know, we see across the portfolio yes. an opportunity to play uh, and build a large exposure to India, which will 
uh, be a resilient portfolio, hmm. long-term focused, where we can generate returns on a compounding basis over the long term. Right. And that's how we've done it over the last decade or so. Uh, India has been the best performing market for Tomasa globally hmm. uh, in terms of returns. Hmm. Uh, and we, we hope that, that that can continue. Right. Uh, so you spoke about a lot of things that you're doing in India. And I would like to add to that, uh, Ravi, that you're also an LP to many large private equity players in the hmm. country. So indirectly also, you are heavily invested in the country. Uh, now, I want an assessment of where you stand in terms of increasing your investments uh, for the next few years and also for uh, this particular year. How much are you going to spend and are there any sectors of choice which you like more? That's a good question because we, we are very thematically and, and trend driven mm. and we have some, we've identified four trends globally. Mm. India fits very well in almost all of those four trends, so yes. Hmm. Because we are trend driven, we are bottom of focus, we will put more capital to work in India because we find the trends tell us that hmm. the market is positive hmm. and we should deploy more capital. Hmm. So the trends are sustainable living, hmm. the future of consumption, digitization, hmm. yes. longer lifespans. So in, in line with those trends, what have we done? And hmm. that might give you a sense of what we may want to do more. Hmm. In longer lifespans, we saw it, healthcare services are a very important part of our uh, our focus, so we yes. invested in Manipal hospitals. We increased our investment in Manipal hospitals last year. Hmm. Uh, you know, we uh, then, if you look at digitization, if you look at digital infrastructure, yes. you know, ST Telemedia, which is our 100% owned subsidiary, is putting more capital in data centers. It's, a, it's the largest data center operator in the country. So you're yes. seeing that activity flow through. Hmm. So like that, there are many examples. As hmm. I go through technology, as I go through on, on, on the, you know, on the future consumption side, we've been increasing our hmm. investment here because we think consumption demand in India is strong. Hmm. Uh, we think consumption demand will drive, you know, wealth creation. Mm -hmm. uh, wealth creation will drive you know, other aspects of capital market and domestic capital markets. So I think the whole cycle is quite positive. So, mm. you know, depending on how you want to look at it, mm. uh, you know, we feel that this is a good time to increase exposure to India. Right. And uh, you said how much uh, in the next few years or this particular year? Well, I think we, we you said over the next three years, we'll try and put $10 billion to work. Right. Uh, and if we can find the opportunities uh, and if we can find opportunities to partner, we we'll partner with strategic and financial partners to do different kinds of investments. You know, typically in, in the past, we were more hmm. uh, minority invested, minority yes. investors. We would put money in the capital markets because we are flexible. We can, yes. we can deploy in public and private. We are agnostic. Uh, but if you can partner with like-minded investors, we can do hmm. larger tickets in, in, in individual companies, whether it's for control or whether it's for shared control. Right. Uh, so that's how we are looking at it. So Manipal Hospitals is one of your big investments and add to a control transaction. Uh, now, is that the path that you would like to go in India for more assets going forward? Uh, because it is a little bit of a change of a strategy for a sovereign wealth fund like yourself. I think the important aspect in Manipal Hospitals was that we were already invested in it. We had an 18% mm. stake. Mm. We knew the founder well. Uh, we knew our co-investors well. Mm. And we really had a very good understanding of the management team. Mm. So what did we do? We increased our exposure mm. to a company that we already knew really well. Yes. We changed the capital structure in terms of who owns what, but not a lot. Uh, we had to change because we were comfortable with the way it was. It's still a board run company. Mm. We have perfect alignment with shareholders and what we want to do next. Uh, you know, we are growing that portfolio organically and inorganically. Mm. Uh, we have folded in, you know, Medica, which was our, our uh, other portfolio company in hospitals in, in the West, in West Bengal, into Manipal. So that, that everything starts coming together quite well, especially when you have a lot of, you know, good confidence in the management team. Right. Uh, so what is your ambition, uh, Tomasic's ambition with Manipal Hospitals Investment? Uh, Ravi, IPO is something that the market is expecting anytime mm -hmm. soon. Is that one of the strategies uh, and how soon can we expect that? The strategy simply at Manipal Hospitals is to grow the business mm -hmm. inorganically and organically. Mm -hmm. And the decision to buy and build will really be dependent upon the economics of both. Mm -hmm. And typically you will find when you already have scale in Manipal Hospitals is, you know, let's say top one, two. Hmm. operators in the country in hospitals uh, you know your ability to build is almost as efficient as your as, as to buy yes. so we will make that decision based on capital allocation and, and hmm. what the right return framework should be hmm. when it comes to an IPO yes we will take the company public hmm. there, there's alignment amongst the shareholders hmm. it comes down to the right timing hmm. timing is when the company is fully ready Mm. when we believe the business is mature enough for public investors to now invest in it mm. uh, so that you know everyone has a good outcome uh, and when the markets are there. 
-hmm. So we'll, we will take our time and we will do it at the right time. Right. Uh, is it at all expected in a year's time from now? I, I don't think in the next 12 months, uh, okay. but, I, but, you know, but, but we will take the company public. But you did say that uh, the strategy is to build it organically as well as inorganically. Now, Ravi, um, I'll take uh, this uh, you know, opportunity to ask you that Aster DM is a large asset which is uh, right now uh, under sale uh, process, but Tamasic has stayed away. Do you think that it's not a good fit for Manipal? Uh, is that not the strategy uh, to build and grow this company before the IPO? I don't think it's fair for me to comment on specific situations out there. Like, like I said, I, I think for Manipal, we have both options on the table. We will do both, hmm. depending on what the right uh, opportunity at that time is. Whether it's build or buy, I think is a function of, as I said before, uh, with the right construct at that time. All right, and uh, also, uh, you know, Ravi, uh, there are a bunch of companies on which you double down mm -hmm. uh, your investment, your portfolio companies, and especially coming in from the startup space, uh, the digital space, uh, the ones which have been struggling for liquidity mm -hmm. in the last one year. Uh, can you give us a sense uh, for this particular strategy, and do you see great potential after doubling down on them, like Farm Easy, Lenskart, Kula Electric? I think that's a good question because it speaks to how we think of ourselves as a, as a long-term investor. Hmm. Uh, you know, we're not, uh, we're always uh, supportive of companies that we believe have a good future. Right. And whether the current situation is negative or positive, hmm. we have shown that we will put capital to work in those companies. Hmm. Uh, so some of the companies you mentioned were going through difficult times and they, they needed to be recapitalized. And, you know, we believe in the future. We believe in the, the trend investing you know, framework that we have supports the fact that company will do well. Mm -hmm. It had some things to fix. So we, if capital was the need to fix that problem, mm -hmm. we will come up with the capital and double down on that particular mm -hmm. investment. Some companies need capital to grow mm -hmm. because the opportunity is pretty phenomenal. Uh, we already own that business. Uh, it makes sense for us to put more capital in it because then we can capitalize on the growth of that business uh, rather than letting it raise capital from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, is a, it is a consequence of where the business is, what the opportunity is, and that comes into our intrinsic value-based uh, decision process. So the kind of cycle we have seen in the startup space, um, where the valuations rose very quickly, mm. some of them could go for an IPO, others got stranded, and then the liquidity crash took mm. place. Does that worry you as an investor, especially when we have seen a uh, few casualties also in some of the sectors that you have a presence in, uh, like uh, the ed tech sector? No, I, I think it's a fair point that there were excesses in certain areas of the market mm. in some certain sectors. Uh, there was there was excesses globally, not just in India here, right? There was excesses in, in the sort of unprofitable tech space, which took a significant amount of capital into certain companies that probably may not have raised capital at the right value at the right time. Mm. So that all is corrected. And the correction was was a good thing. Yes. Because it's brought brought things down to the level where now profitable growth is what investors expect, hmm. and if you can see profitable growth, then it makes sense to put capital to work, provided the runway is there. That, yes. That's how we look at it for across across the entire sector. So I don't think it's I don't think it's a matter of choosing; it's a matter of determining where you want want to put capital to work, where you will see the potential for profitable growth, and and then if they call, if they you know if the macro is supporting that particular trend, then we should play it. Right, uh, because uh, see, some of them have seen even 90% drop in the valuation. So to f pick from there uh, will be a Herculean task. What is your view on uh, overall online pharmacy business in the country? We still think the potential is, is actually pretty significant because mm -hmm. as we've seen in different, uh, you know, uh, direct-to-consumer businesses that have gone online, mm -hmm. pr the execution is important, yes. uh, access to capital is important, mm -hmm. and then you've got to see what the opportunity is. Yes. The, the mindset for buying online is across many, many different sectors. You know, online pharmacy is just one particular subsector of that. We, we see growth in all of them. Ravi, lots more to discuss with you, but after a very short break, stay tuned.